Hey everybody, welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. Again, I know I haven't spoken that much on coronavirus lately. There's lots of physicians out there who are doing an excellent job. But with the news of Omicron, the B.1.1.529, I thought I'd better say something. I can't say much because we don't know that much about it, but we're gonna review coronavirus, we're gonna review variants and mutations and understand that a little bit better on today's episode. virologist and the head of South Africa's Ministerial Advisory Committee on COVID-19 vaccines told the news recently that based on the current data, the vaccines protect most people from severe disease due to Omicron. What you certainly were seeing in South Africa, and this is obviously preliminary information, preliminary observations, uh, is that the cases appear to be so far mild cases. There have been a number, a significantly large number of breakthroughs. Uh, individuals who've been fully vaccinated and are still being infected. But fortunately, as I mentioned, those breakthroughs tend to be mild. We also have to remember that just over 24% of South Africa's population is vaccinated. In the United States, 70% of people have had one dose and 60% of people are fully vaccinated. Vaccinated individuals who have contracted Omicron have had mild illness. Hey, what about children? children and this was published in a small little web page from south africa as we've discovered that the omicron variant seems to be causing mild symptoms especially in the vaccinated individuals but it's also infecting younger individuals people less than 50 and it also is infecting people less than five years old so children are getting infected with this variant now is it causing severe disease not necessarily People who get boosted after their two-dose mRNA should really do quite well. Even people who have the two doses, they likely will still have a degree of protection against severe disease leading to hospitalization and death. It's obvious that the spike protein has changed its look. It may overall be the same person, but have a different jacket on. SARS-CoV-2 is a positive single-stranded RNA virus that encodes about 29 proteins, four structural, nine accessory, and 16 non-structural proteins. All the proteins have a particular job to do. So as long as the protein can function how it's designed to, amino acids can change. When they change, all hell can break loose. This can lead to different variants and improve the function of some of the virus's characteristics. Whereas the spike protein on the Delta variant may have 18 amino acids mutated when compared to wild type coronavirus, the spike protein on Omicron may have up to 43 amino acid residues that are mutated, but typically it's about 30. 15 of these mutations are going to be at the receptor binding domain, which is the place where the spike protein will bind to our own cells. A spike happens to be how we identify variants. We talked about the Omicron updates. We now know a few more things. When you look at what the vaccines did, besides prevent mortality and protect us, but they also gave us time to create more effective therapies. We know that the monoclonal antibodies currently in distribution, I'm talking Regeneron Cove, Bamlinivimab, Etisivimab, and also Sotrovimab, these monoclonal antibodies are given to people who have risk factors for severe disease, people that have chronic respiratory conditions, chronic neurologic conditions, diabetes, hypertension, BMI greater than 25, they're immunocompromised. But also we have to remember that these antibodies are given to people who are exposed to SARS-CoV-2 or who have tested positive to SARS-CoV-2. That left out a significant portion of the population who has to continue to be immunocompromised. They had to be exposed or they had to be positive, so we had to wait for them. What we've now done, because of a recent emergency use authorization for a drug called Evushield, is now these patients, transplant patients, who have to remain on their immunocompromising medications, autoimmune disease patients, patients that I take care of, who have to remain on their immunocompromising medications, they now qualify for Evushield, which is another combination monoclonal antibody, right? It's silgivimab and texagivimab. 
And what these monoclonal antibodies do, and all monoclonal antibody products do, is they bind to the receptor binding domain of the spike protein, not allowing the spike protein to attach itself to our cells, thereby preventing infection and also preventing the activation of the inflammatory response, which can become lethal. I am really looking forward to giving these patients this medicine so that way they do not get extremely sick because taking care of an immunocompromised patient that develops SARS-CoV-2 infection is really, really difficult. I'm excited to educate the rheumatology colleagues and other pulmonary colleagues and everyone else who takes care of immunocompromising patients. As we also move forward, there are now PO products, Paxlovid and Molnupiravir, which will be released in the very near future as well. This is going to provide even more access because these medications can be taken by mouth. The pandemic's been tough. It sucks. We've lost a lot of life. But I do see medicine pushing itself forward a little bit. And I do see a little bit of a light at the end of this tunnel because I do think that we're coming to the end of the pandemic. I'm not saying it's going to happen next week, next month, or even in the next six months. All I'm saying is as medicine is pushed forward, this has led to therapeutics that are effective in treating SARS-CoV-2 infection and also preventing COVID-19, the disease caused by SARS-CoV-2 infection, by giving this medication to the patients who need it most. So there's some hope here. Remember, immunity is supposed to warn the immune system that something is here. And if you're exposed, your immune system's not gonna trip too much. So for me, I understand the concern, but I also understand our white blood cells have evolved with viruses on their mind. I do expect our immune system to prevail, and I expect our scientists to prevail as well. I understand all the concern in the world, but let's wait, continue with PPE, and increase our vaccination efforts. Exposure to a spike protein to train the immune system is a lot easier than having the immune system exposed completely off guard. You want the immune system to understand what the spike protein looks like from a foundational standpoint, so that way the immune system recognizes it and can call upon its cousins and its friends to help defeat the virus. So I think it's important for people to understand that vaccination is still important and perhaps getting another dose of the vaccine may help the immune system understand this spike protein even more. I appreciate you guys joining today's episode of Medicine Deconstructed. I understand the fear behind Omicron, but I also want people to know with the information that we have so far, if you're a vaccinated individual, you tend to have mild symptoms. Can things change? Sure they can, but I want people to be able to give the appropriate information. That's what we're doing today, arming you with information. I appreciate you guys being here, and I look forward to you guys being here next week where I can provide you with some more ammunition.